Hey guys, it's Alex and I'm here at Power with the Hour 9. I just wanted to take this opportunity to talk about O2 placement and uh, E85. A lot of people ask me all the time when they fall out their O2 sensors, what's causing it? Well, the biggest culprit is moisture, obviously. Um, a lot of headers that are, these are I think a set of Dynatex, uh, put the O2 sensor pretty much at a 90 degree angle this way from the collector. Okay, Cooks and other manufacturers actually put this at a 45 degree angle slightly uh, higher than this, maybe somewhere up, up in this range, so that it's less likely to collect moisture at the, at the sensor and potentially killing the O2 sensor. Now when you have long tubes in E85, it's almost like a guarantee, it's just a matter of when uh, the sensor is going to go and a lot of people say, well what can we do to combat that? Well there's a couple of things you can do. You can re-weld the bung at a 45 degree angle. Or you can put in a thing called a heat sink. Basically, it's like a part that threads into the O2 bung first, and it actually moves the O2 sensor away from direct contact or direct airflow and making it less likely that moisture gets all caught up in it. Uh, a lot of people you know, ask me a bunch of questions about O2 sensors and E85, and it's real crucial, especially when you have long tube headers, to make sure that you cock it at a 45 degree angle, or put a heat sink in it, bringing it away from the collector and it should be good. Now, this is a Dynatech header and if you could see, right at the end of the collectors, um, you know, the O2 is there. I almost wish it was a little further down, maybe a little closer to this side so it doesn't directly sample from these two banks, you know what I mean? Because if you look at it closely, these two banks are coming right into there and I almost wish it was slightly down. Now I'm just being a stickler about it, it probably doesn't matter. But, you know, if you're going to pay $1,000 for headers, uh, which is pretty, pretty much what they're costing nowadays, is $1,000 um, for a quality header, um, it's probably a good idea to make sure you look at where the O2 is placed if you're going to go E85 so that it's less likely that moisture collects on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get underneath my Mustang. It has a set of Cook's headers, which are a little on the pricier side, but hopefully when you get underneath, you'll be able to tell exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to O2 placement and uh, angles. Good example actually. And I won't cut because I need to fill about 10 minutes of your time. So this is a Cook's header. And remember what I was talking about the previous header that you just saw was a Dynatech? Well, it's a little further down and not on the primary itself like the other one was. And look at the placement. It's at an angle. It's actually more severe than a 45. It's actually yeah, I mean, the other one, the other header was coming out of here and Cooks places it way up there for the right reason, I think, is to basically keep it away uh, or have it less likely for it to collect moisture in the O2. Let's look at the other bank. Oh, baby. So there, oh, there we go. There you go. So you can see it's a little further down from the primary and it's at a 45 degree angle and it makes it less likely for moisture to collect on it, killing your O2s. If you have constant O2 issues, this is probably the culprit. And thank goodness people like Cooks think ahead of time and fix it and uh, make it at a 45 degree angle. I have not had, knock on wood, any issues with O2 sensors in this car. And it's been on E85 for the last two or 3,000 miles. And it's probably been on E85 most of its life, but it just recently got a set of Cooks headers within the last two or 3,000 miles. And I haven't had any issues. Actually, now that I'm down here, this is a good uh, chance to show you where the header leak was coming from that I was having for a while. Right up in there is the rear um, primary, or the rear, you know, the number, I think number eight cylinder basically. And this guy was just leaking forever. Now, if you look at the bolts, we highly suggest not using the bolts that are provided by any header manufacturer. We prefer you use the stock studs that um, just are thicker and I think they seal better. These are those Cook's bolts that have those little locking tabs. But on the rear, we just removed them and just cinched it down and uh, it seemed to has done the trick of uh, preventing it from leaking. So a lot of you guys that are out there looking for headers and you go the cheap route, remember, you might go cheap, but they're not built with uh, E85 in mind or keeping moisture away from the sensor in mind. They're cheap for a reason. So when I get asked all of the time, hey Alex, if I'm gonna get a set of long tube headers, what brand do you recommend? And I say American Racing Headers or um, American Racing Headers or 
cooks. And people say, well, what about this brand? What about that brand? And I just mentioned what I recommended. There's a reason I recommend things um, that I do. And it's because you're they're less likely to fail O2 sensors when using E85. The build quality is excellent. And there have been a bunch of headers manufacturers that you know want want me to rep them and stuff like that and I, I simply say no because if cooks and ARH do the job why mess around now there are new uh, header manufacturers out there like LTH I think it's literally called long tube header brand I don't know what the O2 placement is I haven't seen them but Ben Calamer puts them on his 2018 Mustang he's very happy with the fit and finish so I might be looking into those for the 2018 but for my money um, I would spend because look when I put a set of headers on the car I intend of never taking them off now are headers worth it are headers worth the the price well that's up to you honestly I think a naturally aspirated car can do well with like catalytes stock manifolds and it should be good for a long time because I don't think you gain the you know you don't gain like 20 horse from headers after you spend about 1500 bucks yes headers are that expensive especially a quality header the reason uh, other headers are cheaper is because of the build quality the build quality just isn't as good and you guys got to understand that when you buy parts for a Mustang and you go the cheap route you're gonna get not so great results and you'll say well my buddy has long tube headers and he's never had an issue right because he probably bought a premium set of headers and not has really had any issues because the header manufacturer thought of shit. They're like, let's cock it out of 45. Let's make the material thick because a lot of people are going to use E85. Let's you know get some proper coating in there and there really isn't any issue. So try not to skimp out when it comes to parts like that, especially headers. So this will be a real quick video showing you the difference between a Dynatech header and the O2 placement on it versus what I have in this car, a Cook's long tube header and the O2 placement on the primary on this guy and which one is less or more prone to potentially failing in the future if you use E85. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll talk to you later.